Our understanding of how the world worked in the distant past comes from archaeologists, scientists, historians, and other experts. They're all clever people, and they do the best they can, but they can't always get it right. They come up with theories based on the evidence available to them, but sometimes new evidence appears and forces them to change those theories. This is a video all about the discoveries that provide that evidence. They're finds that change history. As one of the most famous and celebrated ancient civilizations in the world, you'd probably assume that Greece has already been fully charted and explored by archaeologists. But that apparently isn't the case. A team of researchers from several European universities made the Greek find of a lifetime in late 2016, when they discovered the remains of an entire ancient city hiding in the middle of Vlochos in Palamas. It's always been known that there were some ancient ruins on the top of Stronglivoni, a 705-foot-tall hill that dominates the local skyline. But new research has located many more buildings covering a much larger area of the land. There's evidence of rows of houses, along with a town square, found along with 2,500-year-old pottery shards. Robin Ronland of the University of Gothenburg, who led the study, confessed to being mystified that nobody had ever fully explored the hill before. Who lived in this mysterious city on the hill? Where did they all go? And why has there been no record of their existence until now? Perhaps we should just start again from the beginning when it comes to Greece and archaeology. We say that because in early 2018, archaeologists discovered evidence of advanced metalwork and engineering practices underneath a 4,000-year-old pyramid on the Greek island of Keros. The pyramid itself was once a stunning feat of ancient engineering. Known as Daskalio, it was once covered with more than 1,000 tons of white stone and had the appearance of a stepped pyramid rising dramatically out of the Aegean Sea. Its exterior doesn't look as majestic today, but beneath that exterior are a series of complex drainage tunnels built over a thousand years before the Minoan Palace of Knossos had indoor plumbing. Experts have also found axes made of lead, a copper dagger mold, the remains of a bellows, and a fully intact clay oven. Whatever was going on inside this shattered pyramid 4,000 years ago, it was light years ahead of what seems to have been going on in wider Greece at the same time. Again, as with the newly discovered city, we can't help but wonder how this has only been discovered within the past few years when it's been hiding in plain sight for centuries. It's believed by some scientists that the Aboriginal Australians are the oldest civilization on Earth, with an ancestral lineage that can be tracked back more than 75,000 years. Despite that, they're still poorly understood in terms of their history and ancient culture. That makes discoveries like this next one so important. It turns out that we've been looking in the wrong places by trying to find ancient Aboriginal settlements on land. We should have been looking in the sea instead. Two different ancient Aboriginal settlements were identified underwater in mid-2020, both of which would have been submerged shortly after the end of the last ice age. One of the settlements is approximately 7,000 years old, and the other is around 8,500. Both of them are off the Pilbara coast and were identified via the presence of hundreds of stone tools strewn across the ancient floor. It's thought that the modern shoreline is 100 miles further inland than it would have been prior to the Ice Age, so there could be dozens of small Aboriginal settlements beneath the waves here. As more information is recovered, it may finally be possible to begin drawing a map of former Aboriginal territories. Could ancient history be rewritten by the discovery of just one grave containing only one ancient warrior? That's what the archaeologists who found this warrior's tomb in Messenia, Greece in 2015 believe. When the warrior went to his grave close to the legendary palace of Pylos 3,500 years ago, he was buried with ivory combs, thousands of beads made from precious stones, rings made from solid gold, beautifully ornate swords, and plates and bowls made of bronze rather than the customary ceramic. This is highly irregular for a warrior's burial, and it's made even more irregular 
by the fact that the warrior is alone in his tomb. A glut of grave goods like this might make sense in a family tomb, but not for a single non-royal individual. It's previously been believed that the only great wealth in Greece during this time was concentrated around Athens, with Pylos considered a comparatively minor settlement. But this lavish burial turns that assumption on its head. Whoever this warrior was, they clearly had money, and the people who buried him could afford to part with these riches by doing so. Perhaps the status of the whole area needs to be reevaluated. The Amazon rainforest might also be in urgent need of archaeological reassessment. Until 2018, historians had always believed that the bulk of the Amazon was unpopulated and underdeveloped prior to the arrival of European colonists, and that those who did live in the area stayed close to the river. Now, we know that idea is nonsense. Beginning in 2018, archaeologists have found more than 80 examples of earthwork hidden deep in the rainforest, including plazas, farms, fortified villages, and roads connecting those villages together. Based on the evidence obtained thus far from the site, which is in the Mato Grosso region of Brazil, there were around 1 million people living in these settlements between the 13th and 16th centuries. They left behind geoglyphs that are more than 1,200 feet wide, and yet we didn't see them until we scanned the region using LiDAR technology. It's likely that these were Awarak people who spoke the same language and had cultural similarities, although habits might have varied from one village to the next. We've always thought of this part of the world as wild, untamed rainforest. In reality, it might be more accurate to think of them as abandoned gardens. While it's generally accepted that Homo sapiens, the earliest modern humans, first emerged around 250,000 years ago, human-like creatures existed on the planet long before that. As an example, a child's milk tooth was discovered in a cave in France in mid-2018, and the tooth is an astonishing 560,000 years old. That means it either fell or was pulled out of a young human-like creature's head more than half a million years ago. The tooth comes from a species called Homo heidelbergensis, which is thought to be the most recent common ancestor to both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. The tooth is a full 100,000 years older than the famous Tottoville Man skull, which was found at the same site in 1971. It's thought that this particular subhuman species was the first to build wooden shelters. Finding physical remnants of them is a rare occurrence, and so scientists hope that studying this humble child's tooth might tell them more about their diet and behavior. Given the sheer volume of archaeological discoveries that have been made at this French site, archaeologists are wondering whether it could have been a permanent shelter, which would go against a lot of what we think we know about early hunter-gatherer behavior. We might not be as different from people who lived thousands of years ago as we sometimes like to think. Each of us has seen a crudely drawn phallus on a wall before. Some of us might even have drawn one or two ourselves. It appears that this is a very ancient habit, as bored Roman soldiers did the same thing on the rock walls of a quarry close to Gelt Woods, Brampton, England, more than 1,800 years ago. The phallic drawing isn't the only notable example of Roman graffiti at the site, though. The wall, which has become known as the Written Rock of Gelt, also demonstrates that the soldiers had a sense of humor. There's a caricature of their commanding officer etched onto the stone, presumably made with the intention of mocking him. Another scene shows a man's head and shoulders above the word Gaius, which has been interpreted as a name, next to an arrow pointing downward. Experts aren't sure whether these are directions or a tribute to a colleague who fell off a cliff. A project to take detailed 3D scans of all the markings has been ongoing as of February 2019, so more details might emerge once the scans are complete. We're staying in Britain for a moment because there's another story to tell. New questions were asked about the accuracy of historical accounts of the country's Bronze Age after the discovery of a 4,000-year-old burial in Dartmoor in 2014. The burial consists of a small box, into which the cremated bones of a young woman were placed along with furs, wooden ear studs, a necklace, 
other items of jewelry, and a few scraps of what might be bear skin. The box also contains 34 tin studs, which are the oldest examples of metalworking ever found in this part of the country. The presence of amber from the Baltic is a total mystery, and even the wooden ear studs are thought to be the oldest examples of wood turning on record. Either this woman had a totally unique jewelry collection, or the people of the Dartmoor area were more advanced 4,000 years ago than we've ever given them credit for. The placement of the burial is also curious. It's almost 2,000 feet above sea level, in a place that can only be accessed after walking for almost an hour across bog and marshland. Burying her here was clearly a deliberate choice, but historians have no idea why. Was she someone very important? Or have we been doing these ancient Brits a disservice with our assessment of them? The Tower of David in Jerusalem has been studied extensively by archaeologists for many years. So it's a wonder that this next find wasn't made until late 2020. It's an Arabic inscription underneath the tower that challenges the official narrative of this old citadel's distant past. What was thought to be a 12th century crusader wall might actually have been built by the Muslims 100 years later. The inscription was found in a stone that forms part of an Ottoman era cannon platform, but the same stone is believed to have been reused and was once part of the foundations of an outer wall. The inscription bears the name El Melek El Muatem Isa, a nephew of Saladin who ruled Jerusalem during the early 13th century. It was he who built many of the foundations of modern Jerusalem, and he had a tendency to have his name recorded on the foundation stones of anything built by his order. This appears to be one of those stones. The question of who built which part of the citadel and when they did it is now up in the air, and it's something for archaeologists to argue about over the next few years while they look for further evidence. In 1903, a bare bone was discovered in a cave in County Clare, Ireland, and collected by the country's National Museum. It was placed in a box when it arrived there, and nobody thought enough of it to look at it properly until mid-2016. That was a mistake. When it was finally studied that year, experts identified signs that the bear had been carved up and butchered by human beings approximately 12,500 years ago. That's a big problem for historians, because they've always thought that the humans didn't arrive in Ireland until around 2,000 years later than that. The bone, which is a patella or kneecap, has been radiocarbon dated, so there's no doubt about its age. It's also provable that the cut marks on the bone were made when it was fresh. What can't be absolutely proved is that the cut marks were made by humans, but there doesn't appear to be any other rational explanation for them. They're straight, deep, and symmetrical, which almost rules out the idea that they were caused by nature. The history of human settlement in Ireland has now gone out of the window. The history of human settlement in China goes back much further than it does in Ireland, but we still don't know precisely when or where it started. Perhaps this May 2020 discovery will help with that. It's a ruined ancient settlement in Zhangzhou, and experts believe it might be 5,300 years old. This part of China is already considered to be important in the context of the development of Chinese civilization. But this new find at the Shanghai Shu archaeological site is older than all the rest. It's surrounded by three deep trenches, which would have afforded plenty of protection for the inhabitants living at its center. There's even a little evidence of primitive urban planning, including a road system and sanitation. While human life existed in China long before 5,300 years ago, it's never before been thought that the basic building blocks of civilized urban living were in place this long ago. Some evidence, including a carved boar tusk shaped like a silkworm, implies that the city might have sold silk to sustain itself. Did this settlement mark the beginning of China as we know it today? It's a bold claim, but it's highly possible. You might not think that the discovery of an old Viking longhouse would be especially significant in Iceland. 
Iceland is, after all, in Scandinavia, and almost all of Scandinavia was occupied by Vikings at some point in the distant past. However, this longhouse is special and different, and it's been found right in the middle of Reykjavik, the country's capital city. The archaeologists who found it thought that they were excavating an 18th century farmhouse, so the discovery of the 9th century longhouse took them totally by surprise. It's 60 feet long, 20 feet wide, and is accompanied by a 17 foot long fire pit, which is the longest ever found in Iceland. There are no records of any property existing in this place prior to the construction of the farmhouse in 1799, which was said to have been built on plain, unspoiled meadowland. This is the first longhouse discovery in the country since 2001, and might represent the earliest known evidence of human habitation in Reykjavik of any kind. That means that the capital city of Iceland might, in fact, have been founded by the Vikings. That would be a huge change to the city's official history. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.